Hello, Cult Popcha fans. This is just Richard with a little message before we get to the wonderful episode we have prepared for you on Space Chimps. We've done something a little special with this episode. So it's actually a crossover with another podcast, uh, which means that you are getting, and uh, by that we mean this episode, as you are about to hear it, is going to be hosted on the Cult Popcha feed, but also also the feed of our guests so it's an episode of both podcasts so as such you know there's going to be a lot of extra stuff you don't normally hear in a in an episode of film franchise fortnights the other thing i just wanted to give you a heads up on is that our guest didn't realize uh, but he wasn't recording until uh, about 20 minutes into the zoom call we were fortunately recording the zoom call so we were able to preserve that audio for you the quality is like is pretty good but it's slightly uh worse than we would we would normally provide for you guys uh the other thing about recording a zoom call it's all one mixed down piece of audio so there's a few times talking over each other and things that i we would normally fix for you guys but i wasn't able to but you will hear a point where our guest realizes he's not recording and then from then on uh it's all the proper audio anyway without further ado please enjoy this episode uh with our guest matt stewart and it's a crossover with his prime mates podcast enjoy Your life's okay. a joke, you broke. Your love life's DOA. <laughs> is this your impression of me, or is that is that? No, that's me to, trying to sing. To close, close your <laughs> oh throat a bit more to get the AJ impression. I think the first when AJ sent me the clip of your impression blew my fucking mind. <laughs> AJ has such an imitable voice, but I've never been able to get it. <laughs> that's so funny oh man i love it it just feels so nice being aj even for that 10 <laughs> seconds uh it's it's that's the, i wish i wish it was <laughs> that was the truth i don't know if it necessarily is i think it's nice to be aj for 10 seconds but no more than that <laughs> <laughs> after 10 seconds you're just like what's that chronic pain that i'm feeling <laughs> right now um all right Okay, everybody, welcome to an episode of of two separate shows. It's it's a genuine crossover episode today, everybody, because this is both an episode of Film Franchise Fortnite on the Cold Popshire podcast, and it's also an episode of... Welcome to Primates, the podcast where we explore primates and popular culture from Chimpan A all the way down to Chimpan Z. And this yeah. week, I'm so, joined... Whoop. All the way from New Zealand. I think this is the first time I've had double New Zealand guests. It's mm. a big moment. We've been working our way towards this for a long time. It's AJ and Richard. Welcome. Thank, Thank you so you. much. And welcome to you to our show as well, Matt. Um, we, the, we had a Not discussion. the first time we've had one Australian guest. <laughs> <laughs> We we had a brief discussion beforehand of should we record separate intros um, for this episode since it's going out on both our feeds and decided it would be funnier to not do that. Uh, and yes. let, hopefully people are already rolling on the floor laughing at the silliness that has taken place. Yeah, I just, for the, for the record, I want everyone to know AJ said it would be funnier. <laughs> I suggested <laughs> let's record two different intros, but I guess that is because with Primates, I don't edit it. So, yeah. um Maybe when you are taking a bit more pride in your uh, output, maybe then you don't want to have to mm. do multiple uh, drafts and whatnot. I get it. Okay. It's mm. AJ trying to save Richard some time. Yeah. Well, <laughs> as, as the editor for the podcast that you're listening to on either platform, uh, I was not given a vote. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why is that, Richard? What, do we, uh, you want to do the casting vote now? Hmm. <sighs> yeah, what, what's happening, Richard? Is it two intros or one intro? Because we could start uh, again. Well, actually, no, to be fair, it's I, not voted too late. For, I voted for doing them at the same time. Um, and to save was, yourself some work, wasn't yeah, it, Richard? It was, was rightly ignored, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, right. you wanted us to say, like, directly over the top of each other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pan Which, to your left. <laughs> <laughs> pan to yeah, your, yeah. your left speaker if you want to hear AJ. Mm. 
And all, all three of us are over a Zoom call right now, so there are already some overlaps that kind of communicate the same speaking over each other idea. True, yeah. Already. Mm. Which is great yeah, that, podcasting. <laughs> why did why, when are you I thought AJ you said you were coming over this comedy festival. Um I was but then I've got another international trip planned and needed to uh re recoup like you, fig- figure out what I'm doing properly. Cannot call Australia an international trip, can you? <laughs> no, I've, I've never been to Melbourne. I've only been to Australia a couple of times. It was You flying to Melbourne would be the same distance as Melbourne to Sydney or something, I think. Really? Probably. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. think you you should just you gotta reframe that in your mind and just say this is just a day trip. You know? <laughs> All right, let's Richard, let's do it. Let's do a Cole Pop tour of, of Melbourne. In a couple of let's, weeks. Okay. Yeah. Let's I think that would be great. We can do yeah. the next episode in studio. There you go. Ooh. Awesome. Awesome. Hey, can I ask you to something just for, because AJ, have you been on Primates before? I can't remember. No. No. You've been on, I've been on on Who Knew on It other, a couple of times. And yeah. You've been on. on Who Knew It and Do Go On, which are also on the same podcast network. But mm-hmm. finally, I guess to you, this is like reaching the summit. Absolutely. This, I'm finally the peak. a prime mate. Different? Finally on the best yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is the one whenever I, if I meet uh, the listeners out, out in the wild and uh, they say, oh, love listening to you on Do Go On, I'm like, they're a great person, big fan of theirs. They say, I love hearing you and your podcast, Who Knew It with Matt Stewart. I say, you are one of the greats. So they say, I love listening to you on primates. I say, you're my God. Let me kiss your ring and in whatever way you want to take that. <laughs> uh, wow. Well, I'm a big fan of who knew it. Let me okay. Say. Yeah. Well, I think that's the safe response <laughs> after what I just said. The, the I I, this offer was. A I've definitely. Uh, I've neg- uh, yeah. I think I might have. Um, Scared a few people off mentioning primates in in conversation now, yeah. but um, <laughs> I uh, I I tend to ask this question uh, towards the top of the show with new guests mm-hmm. because um, my normal second banana who hasn't really been for quite a while and this show is now quite a sporadically released one but he is literally <laughs> sitting ten meters away from me in the next office um, and I invited him on and he said he is too busy anyway uh, Evan Munro Smith. <laughs> Uh, he hosts a, a gaming show called Jimmy. Uh, I can never pronounce it. Right. I think it's Jimmy James uh, James Show. And uh, he also said when I once asked him who his favorite primate is, he said humans. And then I said, "Can you be more specific?" And he said, "Andy from Toy Story." <laughs> um, now, do either of you, Richard or AJ, have a suggestion of a primate so fantastic mm. that it would change Evan's stupid opinion? Richard, what do you think? So there was you. You put this question to us. I've had twenty four hours to think about this, and there was two that I could come up with. Uh, one is uh, the evil monkey that lives in Chris's closet and Family Guy. Okay, <laughs> what That's a inter- hilarious running gag that was, <laughs> Richard. You know what? I think I think this might be the one that convinces Evan. Can I see if I can get him in here? Yeah, yeah I'll absolutely. just see if I can get him in for just a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> this is the energy that the space chimps episode needed mm. i think because i want to put off talking about these films for as long as i can the rest of my goddamn life <laughs> oh hello 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 Emma. um oh aj rich what's up welcome what's to that? your own podcast <laughs> or, or our podcast depending which feed yeah i think it's very both. fun and confusing yeah it's a pleasure to be here on both, regardless. I was just saying you were so close by, but also um, you're just too busy at the moment. Come up to Comedy Festival, Shubel Studios is for flat chat. Yeah, we're flat out. But I thought maybe you could spare a few minutes while Richard and AJ try and convince you that they have <laughs> superior primates <laughs> to Andy from Toy Story. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, look, I, I was going to say I'm open to suggestions. I haven't really been very open to suggestions. <laughs> But, you know, look, I, uh, you know, I'm open to having a, a talk. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever noticed how it seems today that really all you see is violence in movies and sex on TV? Uh, yes, I have noticed that, actually. Yeah. Well, mm. what if I told you 
that there was an evil monkey who lives in Chris Griffin's closet and he points at him. <laughs> That's and that's really the whole extent of the gag. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, I remember. So that's my suggestion. If you remember, two thousand and seven. Um, does that financial um, crisis? I vaguely remember. Does, does that monkey have a name? I'm trying. It's he's, kind of just. I believe he's the evil monkey who lives in Chris's closet. There is an episode <laughs> where it's explained that he is evil because he got cheated on. And um, yeah, and he like mo- there's like a spotlight episode on the monkey, and he uh, he ends up moving out of the closet or something. Yeah, right. I don't think I saw that. I'm the trying to get like ideas. I, I think kept up with Family Guy. <laughs> what a time that was as well. 2007, in between, obviously 2001 when those towers came down, the whole world changed. <laughs> but then obviously, mm. why why are you laughing there, Evan? That was weird. And then. Um, the financial crisis, what was that, 20... 2008, yeah. 2008. Yeah. So that period in there, what a funny little time that was. Yeah. Because mm. obviously the financial crisis happened and all those large companies came down and, and the world changed forever. Mm. Um, but in between, it sort of changed once, but it's yet to change again. Yeah. And that was the, uh, that the, was the time news. when Family Guy could really <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Know, have an evil monkey. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, I, if that doesn't work for you, I do have another suggestion as well. Okay, well look, yeah. I mean, it, I feel like the, this monkey doesn't even have a name. <laughs> mm. Okay, uh, so that's interesting. So you need so the I, fact that Andy from Toy Story <laughs> has a name because we don't we mm. don't say a lot of him. We see his ankles a bit. I think as the series go he's on, a big he gets enough a few character words. that he has a name. That's true. He's got he's got you know uh, emotions, wants and needs. Richard, I tell Arts. you what, this next suggestion um, better have a freaking name, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, do you do you love Damon Alburn but hate Britpop? Because Ooh. I think I've got the the, <laughs> the primate for you. Uh, I look. I don't hate Britpop. I think I like. Uh, can I? Can I? Is that? Can I like both of those things? Or does that throw you off? Yeah, you don't have to hate Britpop. I mean, maybe you're such a big fan of Damon Albarn that you're like, "Well, I love his Britpop work. I want to see what else he's got." Because Richard, then- is there a sweet gap in between the two? Much like between uh, 9/11 and, and 2008 <laughs> financial crisis, the GFC. Yeah. Is it's that what you're some saying? Overlap, right? Albarn is like the 9/11, and and of course the GFC is like Britpop. Or vice yeah. versa. Well, I'm telling yeah. you that in the middle of that, there was this this sweet. If you say sweet that spot. evil monkey again, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm talking, of course, about the band Gorillas, spelt mm. with a Z. Oh. Yes, Gorillas. Uh, I do like Gorillas. They do have um, definitely a broader body of work than Andy from Toy Story. Um, but you know. Uh, I'm not so hot on their later stuff. Oh. Uh, wow. Well, yeah, they did. Uh, was it after, like, Plastic Beach? They just said, we need more music to perform live. We've been too slow with our output. So yeah, right. they wrote an album in, like, a week. I mean, Plastic Beach is great. Um, I really like... Um, I mean, there's some some of their re- more recent stuff is good. Uh, they're, they're a band that I like. They're a lot Can of I say singles. this? Plastic yeah. Beach was their first album post-GFC. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. So that'll be why. <laughs> Yeah, so Demon Days and Gorillas both came out pre GFC. Wow, that's well, a, post nine eleven. Uh, well, Gorillas actually was pre nine eleven. Oh, and, well, uh, you know the world was quite different then. I think it shows in the music that it's pre nine eleven. Yeah, it was a lot, a lot more innocent. <laughs> yeah, mm. yeah. Um, they're happy. They're feeling glad. Yeah, They've that's got sunshine right. Sunshine in a bag. <laughs> There's hope, isn't there? Sunshine yeah. in a bag to me is hope. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah, what does um, Andy have? Uh, he um, he has hope. I think didn't he go to university? Yeah, oh, gave that his boy, you don't that do that toys, unless <laughs> I. Um, what was I going to say? There's a there's a um, it, during COVID, the Gorillas did a bunch of performing in a stupid old warehouse and live streamed it. And there's a great performance of um, like fire coming out of a monkey's head with the um, narration done by Matt Berry. Um, because of course Dennis Hopper passed away since the track was released, um, and that's really good. Why would they have it coming out of a monkey's head when they're the gorillas? 
That's confusing. I, know, I think maybe it's unrelated to the name. Okay. I think it's a coincidence. But, oh, okay, right. Um, you wouldn't question it if any other band had a monkey. <laughs> no, that's true. Yeah, you're, the head. you're mm. being monkeyist. I'm not sure about that. Yeah, monkeys. Um, yeah. Mo, look, I, I, uh, I really like gorillas, but, 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 but I, I don't even know what. The, I mean, at, at the core of them, aren't they? Uh, they're a collection of humans. So if we're trying to. Um, pip right, humans so is the best primate. Well, I just think it's. I, I think. I think it's not because it's not an actual primate. It's a. Coll- it's a group. In fact, a fictional group. Maybe like you're Andy, gonna, you could you're say. You're going to hate my favourite uh, primate <laughs> of popular culture, then, buddy. Because- fictional's fine. I should say fictional's fine. Um, but there oh, are I had some bad news, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I almost turned myself into a corner there. That's why. But yeah, it's like growing up, you know, when you everyone tried to like see if their toys could actually move when they shut the door, mm. Evan did that, but trying to see if Andy was real. <laughs> yeah. And he was. In a way, we're all Andy from Toy Story. At some point in our lives, we're all we're all playing with toys and hope you know maybe thinking maybe they'll come alive. I don't know. Right. So it's a relatable thing. It's a you see yourself in the character kind of thing. I think it's, that's one of many angles. Mm-hmm. Well, how about this, Evan? My favorite primate in popular culture is the symbol monkey from Toy Story 3. Oh, wow. Oh, the one that, that, that bangs the symbols, right. It bangs the symbols and alludes to the daycare. Interesting. He said, like, he was a baddie, wasn't he? He, yeah, was he a looks bad evil guy. in my mind. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, Might be my least favorite mon- uh, uh, primate in pop culture. <laughs> 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 yeah, pretty. I, I think a pretty two dimensional character. Really, they didn't really go much into the the uh, d- uh, d- again. Does he have a name? Yeah, didn't have the Maybe depth of an Andy. Um, uh, but it, you know, I mean, that, you know, uh, th- that could uh, well have been uh, one of the reasons, uh, th- one of the tangential reasons we covered the movie on the podcast. In fact, his name is Jolly, Jolly Chimp. Chimp. Yeah, but um, they pulled up as well. <laughs> yeah, a mechanical depiction of a monkey holding a symbol in each hand. It's really literal. Well, okay, yeah. no, um, actually, just to clarify, just to just to be nitpicky, the yeah. toy is called Jolly Chimp. Right. The character in Toy Story is just called the monkey. Okay. Oh, right. And that's Im- an important distinction to me. <laughs> <laughs> but how about that? How about getting the character name The Monkey? He's mm. the monkey. The yeah. Monkey. Yeah. Wow. It makes it harder to put more monkeys in the films mm. from that point on, right? Yes. Very but good not point. more primates. I, I, I retract my statement. He's no longer <laughs> my favourite primate. It makes the, the playing field too confusing. What if there's another monkey? There's the monkeys in a barrel from Well, Toy you can Story have the other well. monkey. You mm. can have another monkey. He's just, mm. he can still be the monkey while there's another one. Mm. He's yeah. just the could one. have an evil monkey, perhaps. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 That's like how Richard is the man, but. AJ, you're still a man. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for noticing. <laughs> Shall we crack and, and into what I we do were just hoping wanna, would be a <laughs> not too long? A quick well, I think but well, before we need to get Evans, because I think Evans got to get back to work. But before, mm-hmm. did, did, did any of these convince you, Evan? Um, no, I don't think so. I, I, I look, uh, the the closest one was the gorillas, and I really like the gorillas. But I think at the core of what the gorillas are is a is is a is a human man mm. named Damon Albin. Hey, you know what I've not been doing? Recording. All oh, right. Is that a problem? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> we've been Fuck. recording. We've been recording on Zoom. Sorry. So we have we have a track. If you want I'm, to. Do. I am now recording. I'm so sorry. How long have we been going for? <laughs> ten, Nineteen ten weeks? minutes. Right. Should we? <laughs> well, listeners will notice a, a distinct improvement in quality from now on, right? Yeah. <laughs> Fucking hell! It'll be fine. Sorry, we'll everybody. We'll sorry, Richard. What is this amateur hour? A little bit. <laughs> a little bit. That's primates. <laughs> Could be subtitled amateur hour. Hmm. Um, gorillas are great, a great band, but uh, but I uh, but uh, I don't think uh, oh, but he's because hmm. at the core, you said at the core of gorillas is a human man, whereas at the core of Andy from Toy Story is polygons on a computer, which you like more. I'm oh, understanding. yeah, but yeah. but but he's you know, I think we're talking about the, the, the character, the fictional character of Andy is still a human man. 
Evan, so, I think you're changing your arguments depending on what is what information is presented to you so that you no, can maintain it. No, uh, look, <laughs> it's a very cogent point of view. Uh, I, uh, th- I, I think that they're, they're both human men, and mm. um, and and I think you got to say that Andy's better because he's younger, and that's you know I think Al- Alvin's getting on in, in years. Okay, okay, younger. <laughs> Richard, can you think of any younger? Primates and Andy, <laughs> young primate. What about what about the the monkey in Futurama who has to wear a hat to be smart? Oh yeah, oh, yeah. what's this? Oh, name? I remember that episode. That was mm. quite a depressing episode. I think Gunter? we did an episode of Primates Gunter. about it. Yeah, right. Gunter. Yeah, Gunter. Yes, right. and he puts the hat on his butt. <laughs> <laughs> we did an episode of that with you and Beck Petraeus, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, it's a good episode. But, but um, they do. They know how to make a sad and, episode. And now we trouble. transition into a review of a previous primates episode. <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, look, I don't remember that primates episode very well. Uh, like most things, it's a blur. But uh, but oh, you know, that's hang a, on, that's that gets a... us back to Damon. Damon Alba. Oh, yes. right. <laughs> uh, yeah, some good songs. Park life. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Life, yeah. Life, yeah. Life. Yeah, that was him. Oh, no, that was Andy, wasn't it? Oh, no, 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 I'm thinking of um, <laughs> just reach for the sky or whatever he says. When he's re- re- that's, toys. Woody. that's Woody. That's no, Woody. but he yeah. plays Woody when he's playing oh, with Woody. Okay. He goes, he speaks for him. He's a mouthpiece. No, he's a pool, he's a pool string toy. Have you even seen Toy no, Story? No, but he might, go, he might be playing with him and going, rah, pow, pow, pow. Yeah, exactly, oh, okay. that's what I'm saying. Oh, okay. Evan, <laughs> if ever the Andy defender, Evan comes to my <laughs> saving. <laughs> that was a pretty good Tom Hanks there as Woody, AJ. Well done. I was going for, for Andy the as sky. <laughs> Andy, uh, yeah. Who once um, on episode 100, uh, we got the voice of Andy to do a cameo forever. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. Hell awesome. yeah. 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 Go see, listen to that. See, that now fun. we've pivoted hard into a cult pop podcast conversation <laughs> yeah. Yeah, out, out of nowhere, and I'm very intrigued now. <laughs> what is this podcast supposed to be about? Uh, we're supposed to talk about two movies called Space Chimps and Space Chimps 2, Zartog Strike Back. We're 23 minutes in. Matt wasn't recording for most of it, and uh, we, we get to talk about the films, but that that's fine. You just <laughs> jumped, going well. you jumped so quickly into the episode that my he- head was spinning. <laughs> I'm so sorry. in for Matt. You're going to ease in and probably say, um, "We are. Are we all recording? Something like that." <laughs> <laughs> Don't just assume. The sync clap at the start. Just thought that was for fun. <laughs> yeah. Thought we did that for our health. Yeah, I'd normally like to take a running start, uh, yeah. and then you know, half an hour after we've warmed Get up, 20 minutes go. or so under your belt, and then, yeah, then start go. the real podcast. Matt, I think you're my favourite primate in popular <laughs> oh, culture. You bloody oh. monkey! What are you not recording for? Thank you, AJ. I know that there was a veiled um, <laughs> backhander in there. <laughs> I didn't mean uh, it for it to be veiled. <laughs> 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 I appreciate that very much. I, I choose to take the uh, the hand. I'm not going to focus on which part, if it was the front or the back. <laughs> I just thank you for reaching out your hand uh, to me. Yeah. And I, I yeah. take your hand. It's a pos- and positive I give positive. it a little kiss. <laughs> on, on the ring, perhaps? On the ring. On the ring. Right on the knuckle. Mm. <laughs> and offer extended to anyone listening to this on the Prime Mates feed. Mm. Mm. Evan, anything you want to say before you head off? It's um, been a while since you've been on this show. Probably been a year. Yeah, it has been a while. Any, anything? We've got to finish Umbrella Academy. <laughs> yes, we've got to finish Umbrella Academy. And um, and for, for the, the cult show, popular- not just you're watching it in your office <laughs> before you came. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I have. I've been saving it. There's been so many. There's been a few things that I've been saving for yes, the podcast. Yes, me too. I've been saving that. I've um, been saving the rest of. Oh no, we've still got to do the rest of um, Hit Monkey. Yep. Oh, anyway, yeah. AJ and Indiana Richard. Indiana Jones. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm saving the Indiana Jones film. There's a new Kong film, right? Yes, yeah. there's one coming. Yeah. Yep. Seeing it tomorrow. Well, I will have already seen it by the time this is out, but yeah. <laughs> Bloody hell. You've Whoa, gone ape mad. Cool. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> I love apes! I didn't realise I was meeting a celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> well, hang on. Uh, 
listen of primates might not know this. Listeners, I should mm. pluralize it. Listener <laughs> of primates, but listeners of primates might not know this. But AJ is officially a Barbie expert. Well, so, so the is movie, Richard, when the, actually. So when the movie Barbie no came out. Was. <laughs> well, but, but was Richard on the news with the lower third saying Barbie expert? What? He, he produced the story on the news that had me in it. <laughs> yeah. well, the only reason he got in the fucking story is because I'm such a Barbie expert. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's pretty good, though. The movie or the Barbie? Uh, this is such a, a long story to begin right, right, but we'll it's, it's it. about they did they did they've watched every Barbie film and they're oh. mainly awful apart from the oh I can imagine the recent one mm-hmm. and um, so I think maybe the only two people in the world have done that <laughs> uh, and that I guess there's a lot of them for that to be an achievement there's there 42. are forty two currently yeah. whoa and yeah. that people can listen out that's like one epic episode isn't it. Yeah. You are, it's had to be split into three parts for ACAST's oh. um, fascist regime. <laughs> they, right. they don't let you upload 18-hour audio files. So. Oh, my but God. But it's, it's, it's intended to be one episode, yes. Yeah, we think of it as one. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Awesome. Oh, thanks for dropping by, Evan. Uh, uh, no worries. It's always good to have the second banana in the monkey house. <laughs> good to check in. <laughs> good to, good to, look, it's always good to game out these... You know, the scenarios, these arguments and, and mm. um, you know, uh, we just sort of work out wh- wh- why Andy is still the best primate. Yeah. It's and an I important think- conversation we all need to be having. I think it's a good thing to revisit because think- obviously things can shift. Things change. Yeah. yeah. yeah not this, in uh, not this, obviously, yeah, so th- far. Yeah, this hasn't but- shifted. No, no. Well, I mean, I can think of a few uh, days specifically in time where things changed. Um, I don't need to go into them, but you know. oh, please, why not at this stage? What's the next one going to be? Yeah, what's the next one? Is the GFC the last big one we've had? Depends. I guess on what COVID. You're counting. Would you yeah, count COVID? Uh, yes. I, yeah. I assumed you were being facetious. <laughs> then <laughs> has there been one time. since there? COVID? Could you count COVID as a, a world changer, Richard? Uh, do you think? Could I count COVID as something that changed the world? <laughs> yeah. I'm just, well, yeah, I'm just thinking out loud I, here. I think I might. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, well, here in Melbourne, um, didn't affect us too much. <laughs> <laughs> no, we had the world record uh, for longest lockdown, so. Yeah. yeah and we're, yeah. So, we're pretty proud of that. It affected us so much that we recorded, like, a record number of this, of this podcast, right? Like, yeah, we, yeah, we, we really, did. Really, really, we, yeah, this um, podcast was finished at the, by the end of 2019. <laughs> And COVID meant it was resuscitated just to give us something to do. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, that was the real world story. changing event. AJ it? is hating this. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I want to talk about space chimps. Right, I'm going to let you talk about space chimps. Thanks so much for having me, guys. It's good, Cheers, to, good Evan. to talk to you. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, AJ, not one to hide his uh, contempt very well, I've learnt in my <laughs> yeah, decade of friendship. Right with out there, right on the front of his face <laughs> <laughs> i feel so red right now um you look a bit red red with yeah. fury excellent i meant the other kind of red as in you've you've read my face but i guess okay. that i also mm. am red uh mm. do you guys still want to talk about spaceships <laughs> Um, well, Let's you, just I was, move what? straight on to space jumps too Zartog, straight <laughs> i thought it was interesting when you told me you're like I needed both movies to get one episode out. I'm like, I don't know how you do podcasting, but um, <laughs> a strict two bullet pointed uh, report on um, movies, which uh, spoilers for what our thoughts on them. They're not very good. Uh, well, I okay. can't speak for you, Matt. I know that Richard didn't like them, and nor, nor did I. Uh, but, but we could get into it if if, if all parties are, are happy to <laughs> to get into the the yeah. movies I'll themselves. Alrighty, we're... AJ, what what do you think about this though? Yeah, this, we do two episodes. Yeah, one for each movie. Well, it's it's you. We can split your primates <laughs> feed into that if you want. <laughs> We 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 can't we we need to be we need to be done with space chips. It needs to be at the past. We have a reputation to uphold. There is yeah. You guys are so efficient that yeah, you're doing eighteen episode eighteen hour episodes when you mm. could be doing eighteen hour episodes. <laughs> agreed, agreed, and maybe that's something to uh, quickly something to think pivot about. to. Something to think about. Alrighty, we have got a movie to talk about, everybody. It is called Space Chimps. It came out in 2008. 
Ah, uh, this feels so boring now to be talking about. Well, this coming. this is what kicked off the financial crisis, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I think oh, this might have been the first domino. <laughs> um, it was directed by someone named Kirk DiMicco in what Wikipedia proudly tells me is his directorial debut. And oh, I reckon yeah. Kirk himself wrote that because to, that's, he's the only person whom that's an important piece of information for, right? Well, you think the, the man who directed uh, Ruby Gilman, Teenage Kraken... Is concerned with things like editing his own Wikipedia page. Yeah, I think he's got other bigger fish to fry. He's making crudes money, dude. Like he doesn't need this shit. He's also like, I think because it was his first film, you know, mm. sometimes if you don't know the rules, you don't have to stick by them. And that's why I think he is in the area of auteur. Okay. This man he did things that I think no other Filmmaker has done before in in, in made a film. movie called Space Chimps. Yeah. He's kind of like a, a a Doctor House of directors, if you will. Mm, I mm. think so. Yeah, that's right. He doesn't care about the rules. He doesn't yeah. care about stepping on people's toes. Yeah, yeah. they're like, here's your, fir- here, your it's your first film. Here's the rule book. He threw that thing right out the window. Yeah, he said yeah. first change. They're all going to be chimps. It was originally <laughs> called Space Humans. Yeah, I'm, I'm changing it. This is. Uh, uh, we're no longer calling this Apollo 11. This is Space Chips. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you guys reckon Space Chips has on Rotten Tomatoes? Oh, as a audience or critics? Both. It's the same number. Oh, okay. really? Mm-hmm. I would have thought this might have had a higher audience score than critics. I'm going to guess like 32. Mm-hmm. Richard? I'm going to guess 34. Inexplicably, and I'm not kidding, it's 33% um, percent <laughs> on Ron Tomatoes for both critic and audience scores. Will one of you please tell us, tell the audience who are starving at home, what is Space Chimps 2008 about? Does anyone want to take this? Does anyone remember enough of the plots to... <laughs> I can take this one because... I don't want to have to do the second one. <laughs> you guys are so efficient. Why are you moving on so quick from the fact... The, the, we were e- mm-hmm. we straddled the right answer. That was a beautiful mm-hmm. moment. I think we should talk about it for five to ten minutes. <laughs> R- Richard has the most uh, boring but impressive talent of being able to guess Rotten Tomato scores very accurately. Right. So I've I've been worn down to someone okay. guessing in the right area. <laughs> Um, I actually, I have to admit, this time I did know, and oh, when okay. Matt was one off, I was wow. like, "This is going to be hilarious." That, Presumably, okay. we'll stop Gold. and talk about this for a little while. Uh, but no, AJ being worn down <laughs> in the way that he is, wanted to swiftly move on to the plot of Space Chimps, mm. which is about a group of chimps who go to space. They go to another. They go through a wormhole, end up on another planet. Uh, where the evil Zartog is uh, kind of a dictator uh, ruler. And what they do is uh, the way that he keeps his... Because there's other technology from Earth that crash lands there and he uh, takes hold of that. And anyway, mm. but the, what, the, the thing that they do, the, like, the fucked up thing to happen in this kid's film is that they dip people into this like... Oh, metallic yeah. resin which like and it's Horrific. made explicitly clear you are still alive you are still conscious for Your like an moving. extended period of time as mm. well their eyes are completely moving do you um, think they did that and because in their mind it's softening the blow it's saying well look they're not dead they're just yeah. frozen in place for eternity that's nowhere near as bad it's a very yeah it's an i have no mouth but i must scream sort of torture <laughs> and um and yeah. also how do, well i was wondering how they um, stay alive, you know, without any sustenance. But I guess they're aliens. We don't know. Maybe they they take in nutrients through their eyeballs from the air That's or true. something. That's we true. We don't know. So we I don't. thought I had them on a goof there, but you know, who am I to say? But yeah, Kirk D'Amico thought of these things. Yeah. Didn't the animation quality started out pretty poor? But those mm. aliens are on pretty another poor level. Too. <laughs> poor. Yeah, they're <laughs> really poorly designed. The, but the planet is boring as fuck as well. There's just like no until, texture to it. I yeah. think maybe the second, is it the second movie? Because I watched them back to back. It's a bit of a blur. But they mm-hmm. go into the forest and stuff and it's a bit more interesting with some plants. But yeah, that first bit, the it looks like a screensaver sort of thing, the ground. Totally, totally. Yeah. It's, it's, I, it's like some of this is... Um, 
It's it's one of these films that's, that was made for such a low budget that a lot of things in it are very simply designed geometric shapes because that's what's mm. easy to mm. make in in um in digital uh, design, right? And and I thought that the chi- the titular chimps are they're fine. Their their character yeah, designs, yeah. their animations, they're all good. But yeah, those aliens, Zartog, um, played by Jeff Daniels, um, <laughs> he the voice cast is incredible yeah. so many <laughs> really stars is. star stacked <laughs> yeah we've got Quite amazing um, we've got andy sandberg voices ham the third who's the main character uh you've got cheryl hines who's a bit of a strange pick for a, a <laughs> opposite andy sandberg but she plays another chip named luna you've got patrick warburton playing titan because it's an animated movie from the 2000s so patrick warburton will show up i mm. imagine he's and in he plays dozens Putty, of primates basically. episodes right yeah yeah i think um <laughs> i think his instruction when they said, "All right, picture this. Imagine yeah. Putty was a chimp," and then he and he said, "I know exactly what you want." And when <laughs> they does... did uh, Emperor's New Groove, they were like, "Imagine Putty, but as like an Aztec." And he's like, yeah, "Okay, yeah. I think I know what you're okay. talking about." And Family Guy, they're like, "Imagine Putty if he couldn't use his legs." <laughs> yeah, gotcha. He's very um, yeah. He he can get right into that character. <laughs> Great character. I love the Putty character. Well, how do you feel about uh, Kristen Chenoweth? Because she plays a character, an alien in this film, called Kilowalla Wizza Sahuza, or Kilowatt for short. Is Oh, yeah. Horror. Oh, just brutal. Mm, just so. Worst. Why? Yeah, I guess they were looking for. I don't know who that was for, but for little kids, because. The whole movie's and, for little kids. I obviously, think. the whole movie's for little kids. <laughs> but you, I think the more successful ones tend to go, all right, adults are going to have to be able to put up with this. Mm. We'll mm. make sure there's nothing in it that is like yeah. nails on a blackboard. Yeah, I, th- I think that this movie compensates for that by making the main character like a sex pest, and that's their idea of being like, we can relate jokes to for adults. adults. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if I know. Do I know Kristen Chenoweth? Uh, she's, she, she originated the role of Glinda the Good Witch on Broadway, but she's been in a bunch oh. of... Um, she was in the West Wing. I assumed that this was in there for all the West Wing fans. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Summer for the wingers. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, you've also got Stanley Tucci as a as a as a senator back on Earth. Who um, I was like, whose voice is that? And I was I was sure it was Patrick Fabian, and then looked it up and was like, oh, it's someone considerably more famous than Patrick <laughs> Fabian. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they, yeah. This is where a lot, like, and the budget is small, but a lot of it must have gone to these actors, right? Yeah. Oh, for sure. I was shocked to learn that this had a theatrical release. I, I, mm. I remember looking at this the poster. Out. Really? I don't yeah. remember it at all. It just existed in the bargain bins of um, warehouses or big W's for you over there, uh, Matt, uh, all of a sudden overnight, I believe. <laughs> it, do- I- it really, it looks like, you know, like a daytime TV show that on, on a kid's channel that would go for two minutes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. You know, it just, it looks like just something that would have been mass produced. It almost feels like maybe that's what it was. It was meant to be a hundred episodes of this mm. thing. Like, you know, if we join this all together, we could get a feature release. Do you know that's <laughs> what the sequel to Moana is going to be? It was a TV show. They pulled the plug on three episodes in and they're converting it into a, a really? theatrically released movie, which is like such an ominous <laughs> yeah. What a glam up. Yeah. <laughs> that is um, a glow up. Jeez, that's a big jump. Mm-hmm. I think I Toy Story I... 2 initially was meant to be director video Very and they were like, nah, this is great. This should go to the cinemas. But yeah. that's a whole nother level. Mm. Yeah. yeah it got, exactly. So it got cancelled. Did it get cancelled because it was so good and they're like, this is too good for TV? Uh, I, I, don't, I, I think they just didn't want to... I don't know. I don't have the... the variety article right in front of me right now but i think they just didn't um want to what what do you know more about richard you know more about this than me surely no okay never mind then (laughs) 
And they're um, one of the I few can, things I don't. Uh, I can think. tell you, though, that um, in 2002, this is according to, to Wikipedia, uh, Kirk D'Amico conceived of this brilliant premise uh, of anthropomorphic chimpanzees on a spaceship sh- spaceship from viewing the right stuff. Spaceship, spaceship. feels right. Sorry, a Freudian <laughs> slip about what I fucking think of these movies. Uh, the Right Stuff, which is a 1983 film, a fictional depiction of the Mercury 7 program. It included the line, does a monkey know he's sitting on top of a rocket that might explode that might explode which made him wonder what happened if the monkey would know yeah, uh, and, like and thus it. space chimps was born i think oh, what i i love how a man what's his name kirk well man like kirk D'Amico. D'Amico? yeah i like because a lot of um auteur sort of film geniuses won't be so open Mm. But he's let us in to his mm. process. Yeah. And I think what a gift. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> he wanted to ask the question, what if the chimps knew? Yeah. And like at least two movies in that, I reckon. Yeah. Which yeah, is exactly. what's happened. If, yeah, if not a hundred episodes of a TV series. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I just think that's fantastic. Kirk, what a guy. And I, I just I love the way his mind works. Um <laughs> And yeah, it's so. I I almost feel like you know, um, giddy mm. taking a step into the mind of the man. Could he be your new favorite? Uh, not Richard primate. the man. Oh, right. Well, <laughs> I think Kirk D'Amico might be right up there for me. I I traditionally would say orangutans, but um, <laughs> can I break the the joke for a second and say how funny it is that. The, that the fact that humans are technically primates like completely d- breaks the game of saying what your favorite primate is because right? <laughs> yeah. you can just say anyone now. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Uh, we are we are some of the greatest apes. Well, so, um, so they say. I'm on the record saying that, and I'm an amateur primatologist, so wow. uh, my word goes. Mm. Well, good. I I'm, I want to break away from the herd here just a little bit and. Say praise one aspect of this film, mm-hmm. and that I actually thought, in parts, it was pretty funny. I think, I look, I'm not joking. I agree. Yeah. The yeah. animation let it down. I think if the animation was, you know, Pixar or something, this would be a, a fine film. Uh, there was a there was quite a few bits that were, I think, good classic jokes. I think yeah, it has a good sense of humor, whether or not that actually comes through in every single joke. You know, is another thing. But there was quite a few times of this film where I actually laughed, and I can imagine seeing this at in like you know wheeling in the TV uh, at the end of a school day when you've got a free period and watching this like at the right age this could have been my favorite movie at one point. And like, it reminded me of watching hoodwinked. If you guys remember that movie Mm -hmm. in the same scenario where it's like that movie looks like absolute fucking dog shit. It's got a great cast though. And it's fucking hilarious. There's a second one now too. So we might cover it on the podcast one day, but like, yeah, for a hot minute, that was like the film in my friend group. And there were bits in this where I was like, Oh God, I can imagine quoting that to my other 12 year old friends. Mm. While you were twelve right. at the time as well, have you? Have I? I haven't <laughs> no, seen maybe. this, Richard. Have you seen Racing Stripes? I think that was about a zebra who ended up yeah, a yeah, race by or Frankie Muniz. Mm. Well, you know that our man Kirk DeMichael wrote it. Oh. Holy shit! He wrote. He this wrote Racing, Racing Stripes. stripes? <laughs> yeah, shit. And, Kirk, and he Kirk also, DeMichael of Racing Stripes fame. He's directing he also, a film. He co-wrote um, the Roald Dahl adaptation of The Twits. This guy, like... Mm. And you know, something else That's can a, I say... A, a new version when, of The Twits still to be released. When Space Chimps came out, he was only in his... He was still in his 30s. This man is basically like a... You know, like a young visionary. Yeah. I think that there is a modicum of truth to what you're saying. And at least the sense that I think that Kirk D'Amico is maybe not the most impressive uh, voice in uh, kids' movies. But I do think he takes it seriously because 
what I th- and I think some of this was born out of the like budgetary limitations of what they could actually like mm. model. But there is a lot of world building and lore in this film that I didn't necessarily hate. Like the the, uh, the like I said before, like there's a lot of geometric shapes, but when you've got no uh, budget what is- and or any of life other than geometric shapes. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly what I'm saying. Like some of the wild animals on this alien planet um, or some of the machines or whatever, because t- it feels like there isn't really like a house style they're following, they're all drastically mm. different. It's nothing and like all house. like like <laughs> There's no house style at all. They play, yeah. like, they play by the rules. Um, I thought that some of the the stuff I've I've written here it almost has echoes of 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 Giga of HR Giga style like alien Prometheus kind of like styled machinery. I love those guys. Yeah, there you go. Um, the, what yeah. what those the flying? So I love those animals that were like they're basically like flying manta rays or whatever. Mm, exactly. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 creepy. Like it's it's interesting design. The, they they shot spears out of themselves, which they seem to just re be able to reproduce. They had an mm. unlimited amount. I'd like what a fascinating creature this is. Exactly. Mm. It looked like something from um the Half Life games, I thought. Yeah, um, speaking of um like, you know, things that our bodies are able to reproduce, I do I, I was distracted. I do need to pee. <laughs> <laughs> uh by the end of the opinion. film <laughs> that uh the because the whole thing is the I can't remember what the actual liquid is called that they Fresna? dip them in. Yeah, the Fresna. Um, there's a volcano that erupts at it of it at the end, and clearly, once again, it's done for uh, budgetary constraints. But it it looks like a giant volcano of semen. That's true. Oh, uh, yeah, mm. yeah. For budgetary constraints, I had to had to do um, real effects for that one. Yeah, and um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's grisly. That's so. <laughs> well, you know, you, that's the thing. Oh, I'm that's just reporting. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just saying that that's part of the genius of D'Amico. Mm. Um, mm. He'll get it done, no matter the cost. Mm. In uh, this case, it came as quite a quite a large personal cost to him. I, um, yeah. It's why the film took so long to get made from 2002 when he watched the right stuff. <laughs> Yeah, because he had to, he had, he had to get took the him right quite stuff. a few takes. Yeah, yeah. Mm, mm. Mm. um, I I had a thought while watching this movie, which is fe- fairly a little bit more existential than I thought I would get. But do you guys get the feeling that, or am I alone here? I feel like I'm getting too old for this genre of podcast. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like in my life, not not the podcast, not podcasting about movies, but I feel like the days of watching very cheaply made budget bin kids movies are rapidly like becoming something I do not have time nor the justification for anymore. Do you know what I yeah. mean? <laughs> I think, well, I would like to say, AJ, you, the only reason I have watched these is because you asked me to. Okay? <laughs> I'm so, so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and then to hear that, that it was two movies for one episode, I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, Jeez. I don't, I don't know that I've ever really been in the demographic for this kind of, like, I don't know that I've ever had the time um, or the, the, the drive to do this, but I, but I do it. Anyway, I guess I guess I'm saying when we were do. when we were 23 and we started this podcast, we were doing this straight to DVD bullshit that'll make your head spin, right? And it was funny because who the hell watches? Because we were hopped 42 up on Barbie Barbie movies. at one AM, yeah. <laughs> you know, and now now it's like, all right, sorry everyone, I can't go out tonight, or I can't go to the movies, or I <laughs> I can't do work. I've got to watch Space Chimps, and everyone in my life is just like, AJ, why are you still doing this? You know, why are you still watching these kinds of movies? Giving the people what they want, mom. But yeah, you can cho- you can choose other things. Uh, that's true the scope of your show is could be as wide as you want it to be and right? there's yeah. got to be another uh chimpanzee or or ape themed film franchise we could have asked you to do a crossover yeah with us for i'm sure any uh, which every, way but loose every which way oh, but yeah. loose and then the sequel whatever that one's called um, yeah yeah it's a similar phrase but slightly different every which operation way not or something you like can that. or something yeah yeah, yeah operation yeah, dumbo drop 
Ooh, is that, a, is that a monkey movie? I'm thinking of Mighty Joe Young, I think. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the problem, yeah, that one, a lot of them we've already done, I guess. Yeah. Mm. There, there are a hundred odd episodes, but there's still heaps out. Well, I haven't done the Indiana Jones ones, but I'm going to have them to do with someone. A boo? Oh, I've done Aladdin, done b- both. Have you done Disney, um, Have you done Prometheus and Bob? No. Fuck yeah. Well, Maybe this is an off pod discussion, but uh, my my one of my favorite like pop cultural artifacts is a claymation animated Nickelodeon short series called Prometheus and Bob. It was hilarious, and a couple of years ago we got in touch with the creator and like did a little interview with him, and it's it's so funny. It's such a good. Oh, show. that's great! Yeah, Prometheus and Bob. I haven't heard of it. I'll send you Love a it. I'll send you a personal Google Drive that has all the episodes on it because Whoa. I had to make it myself because it's just i i'm like the archivist for this show you know like oh that's it's, great. it's disappeared from most um plus pa- 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 places on the internet well, that's um, annoying and it was really good yeah it's great it's super underrated as well and the, the creator was so nice and for those keeping tabs he emails me every couple of years or so to send me mm. like a christmas card or something like that it's really cute what a, what a legend <laughs> Um, any uh, what did I say the sequel to any way, which way but loose is any which way you can. Yeah, I might have said right, that. Right. Nice. Uh, we have a segment on on our show, Matt, uh, called Dumb IMDb Trivia. And as as a purveyor of of movies, I'm sure you've frequented the IMDb Trivia section. Well, we do a, a Patreon show which we've almost finished called Phrasing the Bar about the mm-hmm. the filmography of brendan fraser mm-hmm. and yeah we we get into the goofs there as well in the trivia well so so um, but the the trivia because it's user submitted people can just say anything and so we have o- over the years started documenting the poorly written or just blatantly incorrect uh imdb trivia entries for different movies we've covered how many people found this in- helpful <laughs> yes, exactly, yeah. exactly that's a that's a gives a pretty good indication often <laughs> mm. And I thought I thought this piece of trivia would be a good transition to the second film. This is on the IMDb trivia page for Space Chimps. It says, This is the only Space Chimp film to be released theatrically and rated G by the MPAA. All others were straight to DVD and rated PG. Wow. All, yeah, right. All one others. Were- <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that is um, <laughs> strangely written, <laughs> I would say. Yeah, yeah. someone there very confident in the uh, future of the Space Chips franchise <laughs> doesn't want to have be. to go back to edit their comment figures. <laughs> yeah, if they make also, more, they'll be director video. They'll be PG. <laughs> yeah, they don't want them to go back to that sanitized G-rated drivel of the first one. <laughs> yeah. When they got, went straight to DVD and they loosened up a bit, mm. PG, mm. things got a bit hectic then. Exactly, exactly. Got rid of and they also. They and they also lost um, the Andy Samberg. Yeah, 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 exactly. But they retained way more of the cast than yeah, I would have guessed. Yeah, I, I agree. So, um, <laughs> Space Chimps Two: Zartog Strikes Back came out uh, straight to DVD in 2010, directed by a man named John H. Williams, in what appears to be his only film if you go to his wikipedia page he's not directed anything else other than this film do we want to have a guess that this it does have a critic score and an audience score despite being a straight to dvd film what do you think each of those numbers are any guesses uh i i'm guessing i didn't i think it was a similar quality probably but i'm guessing it's going to be lower and I know Richard's probably already looked at this sheet. <laughs> I've solved the mystery of how he always gets it. I know, right? right? That's what I tell him, and he gets really offended. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say like 28. Mm-hmm. I Richard? believe uh, I understand that I think this is one of those rare films with the distinction Ooh. of having 0%. So oh, wow. it has a 0% critic score on Rotten Tomatoes. However, it has a 35% audience score, oh, wow. which is higher than the audience mm. score for the first film. I think yeah, I think it's I think it's got some things that are better. I think it's got some things that are maybe even the exact same uh, animation sequences. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I thought this was such a fall from grace for a film I didn't like that much. Mm. Too. Right. 
It, you um, must the, have been the, paying more attention than me. I think maybe I was paying least attention. <laughs> but I, yeah. what what playback speed did you guys watch these on? <laughs> I had to. Watch I, I watched them full speed. I was so glad wow. they were both under an hour and a half, though. Yeah. I watched this. This is maybe the fastest I've ever watched a movie. <laughs> I think I had, to, I had to go out in an hour and I put it on and just raced through. Um, so, uh, but my my experience with this movie is that it's very very quickly paced. Um, but mm. Can we, can we for the audiences at home? What is Zartog Strikes Back about? Does anyone remember? <laughs> um, well, I've got the Wikipedia plot in front of me. Do I show? Want me to just breeze through that? Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> so it's two years after the events of the first film. Comet, uh, who we didn't talk about. Comet is the young chimp. Yeah. Who, who could really put up with the G's? Can mm, he in yeah. that first mm. film? Made no sense they didn't take... Anyway, and he's the smartest one, but yeah. they didn't take... Whatever. Anyway, so Comet, who's a tech-savvy young chimp, wants to be taken seriously as a full-fledged space chimp, mm-hmm. but Ham, now played by Tom Kenny, mm-hmm. replacing uh, Andy Samberg, mm-hmm. and Luna, still Cheryl Hines, and mm-hmm. the other chimpanzees, uh, do not take him seriously. Comet learns that he was removed from the last space, space, mis- <laughs> space mission because of budget cuts, and he learns this like in a like in a a teen movie from America where there's the list up, and he's got his <laughs> name crossed to it. You didn't, you yeah, didn't yeah. make the squad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. you cut. Yeah. Um, which seems full on. Surely a conversation would have been a better way to deliver that <laughs> message. But um, yeah. So he learns that. Then he sort of he jumps into the ship. He tries to talk to a few people. He's upset. Uh, they don't listen to him, including the sort of Clint Eastwood sounding guy. Mm-hmm. And I don't know why I've got him. Is it? I've got him on my mind because of any which way, but loose probably. But <laughs> do you reckon that the older chimp has got a bit of a Clint vibe about him? Totally. I, he's definitely like some kind of character archetype that's being referenced. Yeah, or like um, <laughs> Charlton mm. Heston in, uh, mm. in Planet of the Apes. Mm. Mm. And then, it, so no one really listened to him. So he, he, um, Basically breaks into the rocket just to, have a look I guess, around. blow off some steam, have have a look around and just, but he's not doing anything. Then he goes through the motions. This is what I would have done if I was here. Mm. Um, flicking the buttons, getting ready for the lift off, And then, oh no. Hang on. Oh no. We're lifting off? <gasps> no, abort, abort, Siri or whatever. Stop. <laughs> Uh, do you have the passcode to stop this? No, I don't. Well, we're going to the space <laughs> Imagine if that's Which I think pass- is a good system. Yeah, passcodes yeah. work that you can't stop something from happening. Yeah. You, you don't need a passcode to, to start it lifting <laughs> off. You need it to yeah. stop it. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, which I think is a good system. Um, and then, uh, so at the end of the last film, Zertog uh, has been dipped himself in that metallic stuff mm, the freezing art, living yes. that uh living the nightmare of being you know a living statue canonically uh, for two use- years before this film as well so he's that's right he's, and he's, he's used, suffered <laughs> he's used as the nose of the rocket to get them home in the first film yeah. mm, mm. but then we find that he's uh just on display as a, a statue at the front of someone's house getting mm. pissed um, on by eyes still yeah, Daxon's pissing on him. His eyes are still darting around. Um, and he's now played by Bender, mm. Joe DiMaggio. Yeah, correct. John DiMaggio, yeah. sorry. <laughs> not Joe DiMaggio. Um, he couldn't quite make Joe it. DiMaggio. <laughs> that would be impressive. And he's he hates Ham. He hates all chimps. And he assumes that the chimps are the rulers of, of the planet. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's another... F- I, I found it to be quite fun. I don't know which movie it was in. But you know how often in bigger budget films... The aliens and the humans will just understand each other somehow. Mm. But in this one, they re- they reveal after the alien is talking to them for a little bit, but then they go to the human's perspective, <laughs> mm. and he's just talking alien gibberish. I'm like, that's pretty fun. And yeah. they committed to that the whole time. They never had a shortcut where he stumbled upon a um, yeah. you know, some sort of a translating yeah. machine. Or Although something. I don't think it's that clean because for some reason they are speaking the same language as the chimps yeah. um, who, who are also not being able to understood by, by the humans. <laughs> but then the chimps can respond to things like the Siri thing on the ship and Siri understands them. <laughs> well, see, well, AJ, come on, nice try, but uh, obviously... <laughs> 
Siri can speak chimp and human. Yeah, I think you would program that in if you're going, if you're sending yeah. chimps into space. This is why on, Siri Andrew. is my favorite primate, I think, in popular culture. <laughs> <laughs> um, I should say, you, you are right that John H. Williams doesn't quite have the same... Um, I think he, he sort of... <laughs> yeah, he's... If anything, he's he's mimicking D'Amico. Mm. Yeah, um, it's, it's a clear he's... imitation of D'Amico. Yeah, <laughs> which I think it's not a bad imitation, but you can see he doesn't have mm. quite the same vision. Yeah. Um, but this, I still think this film was fun enough. I was going into it uh, dreading it and mm-hmm. been ruining... Because I watched them both last night, AJ, and I move. was <laughs> ruining your name. <laughs> I was... <laughs> I was saying, damn you, AJ, and uh, shaking my fist at the sky. The fun but thing about this. Me, presumably. <laughs> no. <laughs> no beef with Richard. Um, I, no we, we actually nearly had you on our blockbuster Scooby Doo episode a couple of years back, and you did, in fact, watch the, the film of I similar did. quality to this before getting <laughs> falling sick and not being able to record. So yeah, what it's a great double that was. Time. <laughs> <laughs> I wa- that was a single film. I watched it in the bath. It was pretty fun. Uh, <laughs> this one, I'm wa- like, I'm cramming it last minute at night, mm. and no it time was, for a it bath. was less fun. Yeah, but I, I, I lulled a few times. I think I was maybe wow. a bit delirious, but mm-hmm. I was, I had a few laughs. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was watching it with a with a mate who, um, he 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 has a, I would say. Uh, He's like a, a youthful uh, humor, <laughs> sense of humor. Nice, okay. And he, he was like genuinely pissing. We were drinking beers as well, but he was genuinely piercing himself, <laughs> laughing at some of the jokes, and it made it so much more enjoyable. Is, is your friend a child? Is that just- uh, no, he's a like he's a six year old man. Oh, yeah. He was yeah, it was great. Or I'm um, sixty. He's older than me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Probably. Isn't it isn't it crazy to watch a movie like this where like the story machinations from the first film are taken into consideration in the second film, right? Like it is not just it's another it's another chimps in space movie. This is a yeah. direct sequel, and I am just, I just can't stop thinking about the fact that some poor screenwriter whoever wrote this film had to take consider the plot of the first space chimps and put actual creative thought into developing a continuation of the story. Harrowing work. <laughs> They did, yeah, because normally they'd go anyway back to back to square one. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, but no, uh, Zertog was still there. He's, he's striking, he's back. striking back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. So, um, so yeah, Zartog's pissed on, but then uh, I think when the rocket is launched by the young fella, yeah. uh, Comet. What was his name? Comet? Um, the blowback from that melts the metal, Shit. keeping him in. Yeah, because Zartog's yeah. statue is just right next to, like, Cape Canaveral for some reason. Like, it's just yeah. right there. The house is unaffected. No. But obviously, for whatever reason, that alien metal is not that strong to... Well, and at the heat. end but of the first film... But it got back to Earth as the yeah. nose of the rocket. Right, true. Yeah. I think this is no scientifically space. accurate. Yeah. <laughs> but I think they, these are the kinds of things that Kirk DeMarco would not have yeah. stood for. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. and it got got a little bit sloppy with a few of these things in the sequel. Mm. Um but yeah, so now he's on the warpath. Um the humans uh we haven't really talked about them but they they're sort of like um Well that that who Zartog is think... striking back against mm. actually, yes. you know. But he he thinks the chimps are the the leaders. Mm. Um so he there's a whole they keep going back to this conversation where he's we hear him going Take me to your leaders, talking to the humans, and then they're hearing, rah, 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 rah. Mm-hmm. um, and then yeah, there's some. I don't know if I don't know if they do characters like that. There's a few kind of uh, stereotypes mm-hmm. in the scientists mm-hmm. that I don't know if they would still do or not. But the um, those scientists for some reason also invent uh, a a ray, like a basically a disintegration ray. Mm. It, did they, that looks like a Wii controller. Yeah, did they explain why it's a Wiimote? <laughs> oh, it, was a, it just was a Wiimote, was it? Yeah. No, well, I like, thought- I, I, it's the exact same 
shape. Yeah, it and looked exactly the same everything. with that button on the back. Yeah. But I was like, yeah, did I miss that they were like, oh, we've put it into this game controller, or did they just think we wouldn't notice? It's very 2010 of mm. them to, to mm. use a Wiimote. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, so then um, the alien gets that. Zertog gets it, which I think was very clumsy from the scientist. You know? <laughs> <laughs> the one uh, thing that you w- don't want to happen. Hmm. Uh, Tucci is disintegrated, the senator, uh, and then maybe the other scientists as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. they will get, they yeah, they, get disintegrated. They confess their um, love for each other, etc. Mm. There's a fat one, uh, yep. a woman one, and an Indian one. Mm. And, and yeah, Jane Lynch plays yeah. one of them. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so we go back and and so Comet's up on the planet and he's. May he's really good friends now with the the the, the balloon head one. Wait, is that meant? Was it meant to look like a boob? Because it had a nipple on the top of its head. Oh yeah. I want to talk about this because these films are laden. Can we please talk with, about boobs for a moment? With, with, <laughs> these films are laden with like really uncomfortable sexual jokes. And Kilowatt, the character who looks like a boob, that I actually posted on our Instagram. If anyone's looking for a visual reference, um. She is showing Comet around the planet and they go to this fantastical uh, jungle and she gives him a fruit, which I think she calls a schnitzel fruit. And she says, we only give schnitzel fruit to very special friends. And they eat it Mm. and then are clearly like, you know, affected by this fruit. Like they they sort of... uh, shake about and like go like oh you know it's it's Thank clearly you. giving them some kind of high now is it drugs or are they coming what's the what are we what's uh, the go here what do you think is yeah, the intention I thought, I thought it was real i felt like because um comet didn't seem weirded out by it but i thought the vibe of the alien was pretty full-on mm-hmm. yeah yeah you know like sort of like you you're a where spe- only the specialist friends like you've kind of this guy's very cornered on this planet mm. away from home. Mm. I don't know. It just felt really uh, like, I'm like, back off, it's lady, predatory. okay? Yeah, yeah. Come on. Yeah. yeah. Pretty, but he seemed pretty, he seemed so- fine with it. But I was feel I'm like, geez, you're coming on a bit strong. Mm. What was its name? The boob? Kilowatt. <laughs> no longer Kilowatt. voiced Kilowatt. by Kristen Chenoweth as well. No, that's true. Oh, right. Yeah. That's back true. Back off. And Tom Kenny cool. as as the replacement of Andy Samberg as Ham, who's very much sidelined in this movie. They clearly yeah. went com- Comet's who we need to focus. We need to put all our stock into. Yeah, um, should be called he, Comet Strikes Back. He he mm. is observing a computer that the others are trying to fix at one point, and says, "All I know how to do on this thing is download Chimps Gone Wild," which again yeah. is like it's not subtle enough of a sex joke to in my opinion be like appropriate for a kid what's a what's a chimp porn name that you think would be subtle enough <sighs> um well matt matt you you're the you're the monkey uh, primate based comedian perhaps you oh, could think yeah, of something okay. here. um what do i got marmosets uh oh marmosets apes. okay mm, i'd like there's, yeah. a, there's a mummy mommy kind of thing yeah mama like, yeah. yeah. i like to yeah or um uh, what else is there? You what got else? Tamarins. Can you do anything with tamarins? Gibbons. Mm-hmm. Uh, orangutans. Mm. Orangutan, like tang, is in like a pooty like, orangutan. Like like a like a yeah, yeah like a nineteen seventies term for like pussy, I guess. Or it's what about a, or, you could orgy orgy tan? Orgy tan. Yep. That's it, everybody. We can go it. home. We got finally orgy we thought tan. of a, a subtler name than chips got wild. <laughs> What are chimps if not wild? Anyway, you know mm. yeah, you don't know that um, it was porn. I've assumed. Yeah. I've assumed, and that's my bad. You're right. Yeah, that's that's yeah, on you, man. That's your dirty mind. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. So, what are we talking about? So they're they're up. They're sort of either getting high or falling in love or mm-hmm. coming or whatever. <laughs> and um, back on Earth, Sartog's still sort of Sartog's got the upper hand. He's really striking back, mm. and then. They decide the boob says. Uh, I think comments like I've got to go home. I got to save uh, Earth because mm. Zartog's on a rampage. Yeah, and <laughs> and then the boob goes. I'm coming. I'll come with you. Oh, <laughs> that we already passed Isn't the part right? where, where the boob comes. Um, no, you're, um, you're right. with him. But so the boob comes home with him, and oh, I don't know why I can't remember the boob's name. But what is it? Oh my god, kilowatt. kilowatt. No kilowatt. Um. 
And then, yeah, they they get back down. I think they use the same footage or the same animation of <laughs> the landing as the first film. Is it the same? Probably. It's very similar. <laughs> who's with the who's gonna notice the except truck. for a couple of podcasters fifteen years later? Watching it know? back to back. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> probably the only way. Um and then yeah, there's sort of both movies have a really long outro. Mm. They finish the film and then there's like ten more minutes. Mm. Where they must have gone, I don't think we can release this as a feature. Yeah. <laughs> we need we need a little we need to show everyone having fun for ages. I think this movie's they got do it, the f- they even do a laughing scene. Yeah, yeah. This movie's got the funniest runtime a movie can have as well, which is an hour and fourteen minutes, which communicates so much, I think. It communicates mm. this is not a standard movie. This is below the what what movies usually are. <laughs> Mm, we couldn't quite get it out to the <laughs> one twenty. You need one twenty. Right, come on, guys, get to one twenty. Yeah, at, at least extend out the credits. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, they, oh, no, they shrink down. Oh, so they, um, comma comes back, saves the day, fixes, uh, like just very quickly modifies the Wii controller mm-hmm. from being like a an exterminating ray or whatever to being bringing them back. Mm-hmm. From Oblivion, mm-hmm. and then um, Zertok, that uh, Comet brings back only in tiny form. Yeah, he gets shrunk. Yeah. It's a bit of fun. Yeah, the, the the dog comes after him, ready to piss on him again. Yeah, he got yeah, he got yeah. what's coming to him. Zertok should have pissed on the dog. Yeah, that's when he screen, got when he got screenwriting free. 101. If you if you if in your first scene a dog pisses on someone, then that person has to piss back on the dog by the end of the film. Yeah, yeah. What what do they call that? It's called chick chick dogs chick dogs gun. <laughs> <laughs> Chekhov's urinary trick. <laughs> yes, that's right. I knew there was a term for it. <laughs> um, so, Matt, on our, our little show, one of the segments we do is we try to uh, continue the franchise. We try to pitch uh, another sequel, another continuation of the um, illustrious uh, Space Chips uh, franchise. It's not the Space Chips franchise we try to continue every episode, but uh, we are doing okay. that this time. Um, so, who's I, who's got a sequel they want clear. to share? Yep. This, is, this one is, I think it's almost writing itself mm-hmm. uh, much like they did with the sequel they'll have to do with the third one you got to continue on directly mm-hmm. mm. uh from the first to the second they went where is zartog yeah where is he yeah he's he's in metal that's where we're going to begin mm-hmm. i think you do the same again it's mini zartog mm. and and maybe zartog uh in the following two years mm. or 10 years or whatever maybe we do it you know realistically and this comes out this year and it's 14 years mm. and in the 14 years mini zartog has um sort of colonized or whatever uh the bug realm on earth oh so he, yeah he's in the weeds but he's got them working for him like he's a dictator mm. and um yeah this is where you come in, AJ, with a great idea. Who's the protagonist of this film? No, here's the here's. I will just compliment you on this idea because, as like strange of a, of an outside source of like bugs are now part of the plot, as 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 left of field as that is, that is exactly within the filmmaking language of yeah. the Space Chimps films. Right, is to just throw in another element. You know, it's not <laughs> yeah. it's not just about chimps going to space. There's also this no. like bespoke alien race with like a culture that gets established and rules of the planet and specific biology. You know, like you've you've gone on the right track completely there. I think actually. <laughs> we we're talking about like the world building of the, that other planet. Who Kilowatt the boob mm. is? Is it one of a kind? Yeah, Do we there's see no other boob? kilowatts. There's no other boobs. You did right. Which you usually famously come in pairs. Yeah, yeah, most of the time. Yeah, sisters, not twins, but still, <laughs> there's normally enough, at least one more. <laughs> I mean, Total Recall. There were two more in that yeah. one scene, but mm. uh, Richard. Uh, so yeah, what? Wait, wait, Richard, can you help me out? What happens here? So he's he's got this bug colony now mm. working for him. Um, maybe I'm just leading this into uh, Bugs Life. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, maybe it is. It's um, yeah. I was going to pitch a, a, a crossover for my one as well, um, mm. and cross it over with two franchise with another franchise. I don't even know if it's a franchise that uh, 
is the kind of thing that I would confuse spaceships with. I think they head back to space and they run into uh, the G force. Is this from the movie G force? With from Hamsters? the movie G force mm. with Zach Galifianakis mm. playing a guinea pig who I think goes to space. <laughs> there is a guinea pig in space chimps as well. So maybe it's the same one. Yeah, that 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 was a that was a pretty funny line where they said um, they realized that as chimps they were just the guinea pigs, and one of them said, "No, the guinea pigs are already on this other mission." And then they hard cut to a mm, yeah. guinea pig in space. Yeah, oh, okay. that's funny. G force don't go to space; they're just like spies. Okay. Uh, spy oh chimps. no, then there's there's G force guardians of space, <laughs> which is a completely unrelated thing, which came out in 1986. <laughs> wow. Because it, it, the G force is that's what that's what the G feeling the G's that's short for yeah, yeah, G force yeah. is that right? Because yeah. we saw that um, that comet could really withstand high G's. Mm. Mm. So I think he's a he's a great link into the G force. A franchise. missing link into the G force. Oh. oh, there we go. Oh my god, my favorite primate, the missing link. <laughs> <laughs> My my continue the franchise. I'm going. I'm going more expected. I'm going more traditional. We've seen space chimps. We've seen space chimps too. Let's check out time chimps. Let's send Ham and the gang through time, mm. where maybe Zartog, you know, goes with them. Causes the global financial crisis. Causes and nine eleven. There we go. That's wow. space chimps three. Time chimps. Whoa. There we go. I like that. So different wormhole, mm. Mm. but this one's this time traveling wormhole. Yeah, I like that a lot. Yeah, I think we could combine all of those three plots. Undoubtedly, into one film. The, these films are so unfocused already that all our <laughs> ideas individually are actually too focused. I think. <laughs> uh, what I like to do at the end of primates, mm-hmm. there's a couple of things we do here. The first one is. Uh, some sort of scientist, regular guest on the show, Andy Matthews, mm-hmm. um, told me once that, and it's actually referenced in these films, that uh, chimps and humans share about 99.8% DNA. Mm-hmm. Um, I want you to tell me how much of yourselves you see in one of the ape characters in the film mm. and uh, what percentage you see yourself in there and for what reasons. Okay. If you don't, if that doesn't make any sense, I could go first. <laughs> I I really see myself as AJ mentioned earlier that you know you've got there's like the buff one, there's the female one, there's the nerdy one, but then at the front and center of the first film, um, you've got the weird pervert, and I really, it's the kind of representation you don't get a lot, um, as a weird sort of pervy kind of guy, <laughs> um. And so, yeah, it was just it was really nice to see ninety nine point eight percent of myself reflected on screen. Wow, wow, you, yeah. So you're a, a very close match. <laughs> Probably the is the the point two percent would just be the fact that you're not a an animated chimp. The point two percent is like a, a stand up guy, like mm. you know, yeah, right. Respects mm. women. Um, yeah. What? Um, <laughs> Why well, don't I don't know if I remember this guy? Who was that? The main character, Andy Samberg's character. Right. Man, I did not pay all that much attention. <laughs> I don't remember any of that. That's funny. He, I remember he was in the circus. Mm. And he missed he missed the hole when he was coming back down. Yeah. I don't know if that was also meant to be a euphemism. Yeah, but probably. Um, what about you, AJ? I'm going to say that I identified most with Comet because he gets left out of the adventure, which is what I wanted so desperately watching these movies was to just be left <laughs> out of it completely. Yeah, right. This, uh, what this percentage you of yourself together. did you see him? Uh, I saw, yeah. let's let's say 55%, because the the other 45% that I don't identify with is the fact that he's sad about being left out. Oh, yeah, yeah, right, that's okay, a big part yeah, of it. Yeah. For me, I think I I saw myself most in the uh, the grizzled old guy, mm. um, just because he was old and sort of grumpy and um, whatnot. Um, but... I'm not not entirely the same as him because I'm not a chimp. Mm. Uh, I don't really understand rockets and stuff. Like he seemed to be pretty good at, mm. at um, yeah, or even the circus, which I think he also worked in, and cannons. He went from cannons to rockets. I couldn't do either of those. So I think 
I'd probably subtract about 31%. So I'd say about 69% for nice. me. Nice. Nice. Um, like a... <laughs> I love and, that uh, your first little um, sort of addendum on why you don't identify with him completely is that you're not a chimp because presumably <laughs> that's what you mentioned first for every episode of <laughs> 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 I honestly, I can't remember most of the stupid <laughs> in jokes, but um, the uh, the other thing we do is give it the films a banana score. Mm-hmm. So, firstly, I ask you uh, if you like bananas. When you go shopping, how many? Uh, what what's a bunch for you? How many do you get in a bunch? Mm. And then, um, so that's your out of score. Mm-hmm. And then, how many bananas do you give this film? And also, how ripe are those bananas? Oh, very complex. Very nuanced <laughs> yeah. rating system. Um, yeah. I, I don't typically buy bananas, but let's say I was making banana bread. I'd buy maybe like five bananas. Uh, and they're all rotten because that's how you make well, banana cake, right? You need, you need rotten yeah. bananas. Yeah. Mm. Um, and I am actually not going to give this film any rotten <laughs> bananas. Even, even, but they are still rotten. I want to be clear. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, All right. What about you, Richard? It's interesting. Uh, before I reveal my answer, we actually, we do a, every episode we do a, a post credits scene question. Mm. And just uh, two episodes ago, I believe, the question we were asked was how often True. do you eat a banana? Yeah, um, wow. And I gave the answer that I haven't, I, like, other than in things, I wouldn't have had a banana in probably 20, 25 years. Um, wow. And, yeah, so if I was buying a banana, I would probably be buying, like, the, um, you get, like, pre-frozen ones that you can just chuck at a smoothie, because that would be the most likely time I'd have to do that. Mm. So I'm going to go out of, um, uh, I'm going to go in, uh, gra- I would get a 500 gram bag of frozen bananas Mm -hmm. and i'm gonna give this film 75 grams wow 75 grams i don't think we've had that rating before are you writing these down matt where did these get held on record where where are these being uh (laughs) each episode has a doc and uh, i'm just noting them down (laughs) And uh, they used to be a lot more have a lot more detail than they do now, <laughs> but I'm still putting down there. Uh, I'm gonna say I, my bunches are always uh, seven, mm-hmm. one per day of the week, mm-hmm. um, of course. And then I think this these films I'd probably give uh, two, two out two of seven bananas, oh. and they'd be fine. They'd be sort of. No, I'll say three, whatever. And then three out of seven. I'm, I'm not trying to like be mean. It's like we were pressuring you, but no one was saying anything. You, you were just Kirk. like, oh, no, no. I just thought, like, because if Kirk, I just want, if Kirk is listening, I, I want him to know that most of those bananas were for your film, Kirk, mm. and your mm. the world you built. And then, obviously, the next guy came in, John John H. Williams sort of just stopped all know, over just it. Sort of, <laughs> Yeah, it was pretty disappointing. But they're they're uh, they're ripe. Mm. They're you know they're still a bit of green, mm. Mm. a bit green. But yeah, nice. Hey, I don't know because you two are big movie watchers. We used to have a segment called Circus Watch, and it was all about Andy Circus, one of the the greatest to ever play mm-hmm. uh, primates on on film. Have you? Is there any connection? This is a question without notice. <laughs> Just thought off the top of my head. Have you either of you had any reason to uh, bump into Andy Circus or know of anyone who has any connection there? Do I know? We used to have a dream that we could get him on the show one day. Uh, I certainly don't know anyone well enough that I could get you Andy Circus on the show. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh... I don't know. He's been to New Zealand. He's, you know, like I've probably met people who have met him. But Yeah, I, I, um, I interviewed uh, Jack Black over the weekend, who was his co-star in King Kong. That's true. There you go. Maybe you can ask right. Jack Black for Andy if Circus. If only we were supposed to record this a week ago. Mm. Uh, and Matt, oh. maybe if you hadn't uh, come down with some kind of flu or COVID, Man, I, uh, I yeah. could have I could have gotten a number for you. <laughs> Damn it! I love the idea of asking someone considerably more famous than Andy Circus if you could get there, uh, get them Andy yeah. Circus stuff. <laughs> Nice. Well, no, I think that just feels like we're a little bit closer along. We're putting that back out into the universe now for the first time in a few he's years. He's writing so all good. of this down in the dock, everybody. He's, he's <laughs> yeah, it's, all in the, it's going into the dock. Um, the uh, oh, I've got a bunch of questions. I've just realised in in the show notes, um, mm-hmm. uh, listeners can add questions or comments. 
I'll just do one of them. Are you open to ha- hearing a question? Please. Absolutely. Uh, this comes from Emily from Adelaide. Uh, and Emily writes, Orangutans, they, I say they can write a question or a comment or mm. give us a fact or whatever they like. Orangutans are known by their reddish ginger fur and presence of beards and mustaches in adult males. Not their value. They're usually vegetarian and not at all aggressive. They've been known to wear a hat or play with a football. Their IQ comes close to the average human. Is that true? Wow. They communicate through vocalizations, chants, calls, and grunts. So my question is, Matt, if you could be any primate, what would it be? I mean, yes. I think I see what you've done there. Yes. Mm -hmm. I am basically, I'm an orangutan. (laughs) (laughs) And I I think they're, they're, to me, they're they're probably my pick anyway. What about you two? If you could be any primate. Uh, was like like a, 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 I think I've only seen this word written down, but a, a, a bonobo or bonobo. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Bonobo chimps. Yeah. Um, they're, uh, yeah, they're the, they're one of the few matriarchal oh, um, feminist. ape societies, <laughs> yeah. I believe. Yeah. So, That's so a very better. feminist answer. But they're, they're also really horny, too, which goes with your, um, <laughs> your perv thing before. They, um, apparently they settle arguments with sex and everything is just sort well, of Well, so they're, they're horny feminists, then, these monkeys. Yeah. yeah. That's great. That's yeah, great. Yeah. If, if I had a nickel. Um, has this, I feel like this, I uh, don't oh no, because this is the first time this question's been asked, isn't it? What, what, yes. Okay. Well, then I'm gonna um, revive a much uh, stood-on joke by this point. I'd be Andy from Toy Story. I think would be the <laughs> the, the, the primate I would be. Imagine the life you would live. Oh my god! I could find. I'm I'm moments away from discovering my toys are sentient, but never quite catching yeah. them. Damn. That's so good. <laughs> uh, thank you so much to Emily for that question. Yeah, like I say, if you have any questions or comments or whatever. Mm. Um, there's a link in the show notes, mm. which is the description of the show, which apparently, apparently people don't really know what that means. No, but we, we say are, that a lot as well. You, <laughs> how would you describe it, Richard? Where's the, what's the show notes? If note? you're like listening to this on, yeah, whatever podcast platform, usually, you know, it'll be like, uh, Space Chips and Space Chips 2, the Cult Pop Show podcast, and then there'll be the logo below that. It'll be like check out our dot 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 and then you can actually expand that and there's a whole paragraph that we've written to make you laugh um and very underappreciated yeah a lot of the time we've announced like series of podcasts have been ending in the show notes and no one has said anything before (laughs) (laughs) yeah well i just don't think people generally and i wouldn't i would hardly read them either yeah um but when when you say it's in the show notes but i guess you know whatever um (laughs) uh should it, but for the listeners of Primates, do you want to quickly explain what your show is and how they can find it? Please. So we are a show called Cold Popsha, and every fortnight we cover a different film franchise. This year specifically, we're only doing two film franchises, which is why Space Chips was a happy middle ground for the two shows. But in the past, we've done everything from uh, Godzilla to Godfather to God's Not Dead. We have been going. Did you since- just come up with that? I did, I did. No, um, we've been going since um, like 2016. So 2016. we have covered a hundred. Space Chimps is our 194th franchise that we've covered. Um, mm. It is it's not not to get too existential, but like this podcast has grown with me as I've become an adult. Like it has been the soundtrack of my life f- through a very formative time. So uh, you can go back and listen to all sorts of coming of age um, journeys. Yeah. Uh, watching movies yeah the first episode it sounds like hello this is AJ Look, I, I not, no not me Richard I have a lisp in the first season <laughs> has and, right. and your voice is so high pitched for some yeah. reason you lowered your voice in your teens <laughs> for some I, reason yeah I did like a um, fuck what's her name from the dropout the Saranda Theranos Check. I don't know what it's you're a, that's a great about. that's a great reference for anyone who's watched the drop out. Oh, there's a of, yeah, there's a do go on episode about her. So there you you know the Theranos. What was her name? Oh yeah. Oh yes. Now I thank you for putting it through the do go on lens. <laughs> Elizabeth like, Holmes. Oh, yeah, no, I know Elizabeth that. Holmes. I'm yes, she of. did put on put on a deep Elizabeth voice. Elizabeth Holmes. Oh, so you are putting it on. I am putting it on. Oh, I my actual voice sounds like this. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I, in early recordings of myself, I have a lisp. There's like video footage from me of me in like 2011 um, with some friends that I revisited recently, and I have a lisp in it for some reason. Yeah, right. Um, Did any any vocal work to I, I, get through that? Genuinely, or? to not like just say it's not me. I think there's like a certain lower quality of mic that picks up my S's oh. really strongly. Um, because right. I think once we upgraded our microphones, it went away, and this was like filmed oh. on a shit. The other footage I'm talking about is like a shitty little camcorder I won in a filmmaking competition in 2010. I love a lisp. I find them very pleasant to listen to. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, um, for the listeners of uh, Cult Popture, this is Primates, and uh, it's a show about primates pop culture. I think there's, there's probably 150 ish episodes, <laughs> and we've done, uh, you know, some of the big ones like Planet of the Apes and you know the reboot of Planet of the Apes. Well, actually, normally we do one movie per to, to, yeah, to, to help pit, per pit, pitch your own show, Matt. You have also done the MVP trilogy which oh, which yeah. we have that where there's some crossover there because we did that as well and it's um a sort of a an underdog popular episode with our fans because we mainly just talked yeah, about um, like streets in christchurch for the whole episode <laughs> oh, and we, right. we made well, someone we... quit the patreon <laughs> yeah. oh really yeah. <laughs> that's so good um, that's amazing well, we oh, we quite liked it because the i mean you talk about kirk to Michael as a, mm. an auteur mm. I mean, he's walking on the the you know the back of the giant uh, Robert Vince. Robert who, Vince. Uh, Do you reckon we are the only two podcasts in the world that have like individual running gags about Robert Vince, <laughs> the, the director of like a thousand earbuds? monkey yeah. movies kind of thing well i think he was a producer more on the air buds uh the directing is when he really took it he directed took over yeah sorry yeah he he directed he directed some air buds yeah. did he, he did he buddies all of the buddies movies yeah oh okay yeah. right yeah. yeah okay i'll accept that <laughs> um we don't don't cross me on Robert Vince's knowledge, but um, <laughs> we we have very yes. quickly got to rank space chimps with the rest of the franchises we've done. Richard, I'm going to take a, a guess for you. I'm going to put it at 188, just above the kissing booth. Do you approve? Uh, well, I, I want Matt's input on this. Matt, do you think that this um, is better than the kissing booth? I I doubt it, but yeah, maybe. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I will say that. Thank you so I mean, much. I haven't seen the. Do you reckon it's better so. than the Six and the City movies? Mm. Oh man, I don't think it probably is. But I, I the only one of the Sex and the City. I was in the Greek islands, right, on this island called uh, Eos, <laughs> staying uh, <laughs> at this place called the Far Out Beach Club, mm. and it was a pretty hectic sort of party place, drinking cocktails by the pool. During the day, very cheap cocktails, and it's um, you know, we're living a Sex in the City type life. Mm. And then they put on, not really, but then they put on a movie <laughs> on uh, next to the pool each night. And I, I went up close to charge, look over me and my mates' phones as they were charging, and uh, that movie was on, and I was like right up the front. <laughs> and they came back an hour later, going, "Hey, we're going into town. Let's go." And I, and apparently, I was just like. Chin resting on my, uh. my hand, like staring up at the film. I said, I'll catch you up later. <laughs> <laughs> I was so engrossed by it. I couldn't tell you a thing about it, but apparently I was loving it. <laughs> That's brilliant. So I'm going to say that I, seeing as I was not engrossed by Space Chimps, mm. I'm going to have to put Sex and the City above it. Okay. And that wasn't even the, f I think that was Sex and the City 2, wow. maybe, which is apparently is awful. Yeah, we, is. we actually know a couple of guys, Matt, who have seen the both. Six of the city movies, uh, quite a few times. So, um, <laughs> I guess. Or is that one of the? That was one of the worst idea of all yeah, time. They did both series? of them. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. Um, and I imagine they were engrossed as well. <laughs> but I think if you are going to watch it, uh, watch it uh, full of cocktails mm. by the pool mm. in in the Greek islands. That's how I would Great watch stuff. it. That's how I'd watch Space Chips if I had to do a rewatch. Right. Can I also tell your um your listeners that uh, the podcast I do now weekly, I do two, Do Go On, mm -hmm. which AJ's been on, uh, to tell us about the Barbie movie franchise, mm -hmm. and he's going to be on an upcoming episode telling us about June. Mm -hmm. Or do you? We'll talk about oh, it. How we'll do you talk say about that? It. <laughs> okay. I oh, man, that freaked me out. But then, uh, but also, uh, AJ has been on Who Knew with Matt Stewart, a weekly 
quiz mm -hmm. podcast where guests come on um, and make bad answers to good questions. Actually, I don't know how to explain it. But I, anyway, I just it's, tell it's a lot people of fun. It's, it's the game Boulder Dash. <laughs> it's like Boulder Dash or Dictionary. Yeah. There's another one people talk about similar called... It's like a Jack in the Box oh, yeah. game similar to it as well, apparently, called... I can't remember what it's called, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's you know it's a an age old format where uh, dictionary is like the first one. People would pass a dictionary around and, and pick out an obscure mm -hmm. word, but we've taken it a bit further than that. Uh, but anyway, um, that's its own thing. It's called Who Knew with Matt Stewart. It's, <laughs> you know, it's actually pretty fun. Um, now, if people want to find you apart from your podcast, Cult Pop Chart. Mm -hmm. Uh, what's your bet? AJ and HD on Twitter. Is that your best one? Yeah, AJ, AJ and HD. And I'm uh, Richard Martin NZ on Twitter. Sick. Uh, on Twitter, I'm Matt Stewart underscore art. Uh, and I don't feel good saying that out loud. <laughs> um, Matt Stewart comedy on other things. But I'm also about to do a month at the Melbourne International Comedy Festival. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Start at the Chinese Museum, then going to Sydney and uh, Brisbane Comedy Festivals as well. The show's called Dry Dry Out with me and Saran Jaimana. Awesome. Um, yes. Hey, why don't you review both of our shows? Um, give us five stars. Tell us whatever you like, and I'll, I'll read that out next time we do an episode. There you go. Um, do that for Cult Popture as well. Yeah. Anything else you need to say before we go? Uh, we, we'll do an out. We've got a bunch of other bullshit we got to get. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let you go, Matt. Um, so we'll let you well, shoot off. I'll um I'll say this though um I uh I put the guests on the spot to do the outro I pretend like we say it every mm -hmm. week mm -hmm. and I'll throw that to you in a second I'll, sometimes people do it chimpolated or a, a callback or mm -hmm. anything or sometimes they just spill out uh the first words they can think of anyway thank you so much for joining me this week Richard and AJ and AJ as we always say here at the Primates Podcast Andy from Toy Story is technically a primate. <laughs> we did it alright well Matt has uh, popped off for just a moment while we sort out this Patreon bullshit that we've got to do where uh, we select the next franchise that we're going to do um, Richard what's the deal what's happening alright so once again we've got a tie uh, I think because you know especially at the stage at the start we've got all the like obvious two film franchises that they're gonna, we're going to be getting a few ties so yeah Blade Runner Weekend at Bernie's uh, Babe and Crank are all currently tied. We are recording this a little bit earlier than we normally would, uh, but we did give people warning that the, mm. the poll would be closing now and they've done nothing to do it to, to, to satisfy it. So people got angry at us last time when we said someone break the tie, so we're going to do it randomly. Um, how do you want to do that? Randomly choose between four on Google. Is it just four? That's the tie? Yeah. Okay, so should we just assign it alphabetically? So oh, I've got a thing that's... um, I, I can just actually put in the, the data points and then it will just spit one out. Okay. So Blade Runner, Babe, Crank, Bernie's. Three okay. Bs and a C. Before we reveal this, though, Richard, I would just like to say that um, we've sort of already done this, but if you liked this episode, please consider supporting us at all the places. You can do that, patreon.com slash coldpopshare financially, or you can do it just as a cool friend over on Instagram or Twitter. Um, and also stay tuned after this for the post credit scene and the triumphant return of Matt Stewart for <laughs> that post credit scene. All right. Um, Richard, tell us what it is. Next, we will be covering... It's loading. Babe, pick in the city. Babe, pick in the city. A duology, if ever there was one, right? Like, yeah. it feels made for film franchise fortnights. It's George Miller. Mm. It's surprisingly good, I'm told. I think Babe's a cool franchise to be taken on next. And yeah. maybe we could have some more guest stars, Richard. A couple of Babes. Maybe we'll come on the podcast. Do you That's have. Me. He... No, I was hoping you would know some of that. No, 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 no. He, well, Richard, traditionally you're the one that attracts the babes. All right.
right. Uh, welcome along to the post credit scene. There's a section at the end of each episode where if you donate $5 or more over at patreon.com slash show, you get to give us something to talk about in this, the post credit scene. We brought Matt back. He disappeared for our outro, but here he is again. Matt, would you like to answer a question from one of our patrons with us? I would love to. Awesome. Well, Richard, good. who's it from and what is it? <laughs> uh, today's comes to us from Benjamin Adams, who says, what's your favorite foreign film that's not Parasite? <laughs> oh mm. and what what do they mean by foreign like non-new zealand film uh i would because i'd say maybe like um jo- probably <laughs> uh, the maybe the um the rise of the planet of the apes yeah that's fu- fucking no good. dawn of the planet of the apes yeah, yeah. Well, either one of those uh yeah i guess if, if they mean non-new zealand foreign language uh non-english film oh okay Oh, well, then I don't know. <laughs> uh, I uh, yeah, first ones that come to mind, Portrait of a Lady on Fire, French film, uh, mm-hmm. very good. Um, Old Boy is one I maybe like more than Parasite even, um, also South Korean film. South Korean, like, especially with uh, Parasite, really has a has had a moment, a um, lot of good mm. cinema from there. Mm. Um yeah, what else? What else? AJ, I've always really anything? loved Emily. Uh, Emily's right I'm just, I'm just... Amelie's great. Yep. Uh, yeah. I'm trying to think of ones that I've seen, <laughs> but yeah, that's that one I remember really enjoying. I watched it as at a one of those summer um, outdoor, you know, like, what do you call them? Moonlight yeah, cinema yeah, yeah. type things. Yeah, one of those things. <laughs> it was a lovely night. <laughs> you have those things? Yeah, there? yeah, sure. <laughs> Sweet. Okay. What's a, what's a tip? I need a tip from you. What should I go watch? Um, AJ, do you have, are you going to say anything? I said let the right one in. Um, yeah. Is, is, oh, yeah, that's yeah, good. There you go. Oh, that was not English. Yeah, yeah that counts. I, I picked that one. <laughs> I just let the right one in. Uh, yeah, check out Old Boy. It just got a restoration for its 20th anniversary. Sick. Mm. Old Boy. Mm. 